you get a countdown. Welcome to the Public Speaking Experts Podcast with Elliot Kay and Jose Ugar. Every week we bring the tips, tools, and strategies for you to become a world-class public speaker. We bring you guests, experts, and authorities in the field of public speaking to enrich you and enhance your public speaking journey. Remember to subscribe, rate, and comment. And now, please welcome your hosts, Elliot and Jose. We are back. Jose, Woo! we're back. We are back, Elliot K. I cannot believe it. We are back. Did you say? Did you say we were back? I think we're back. Would we're you back. say we're I back? We're back. Yeah, and you I know what? We've been on our travels. We've traveled across the globe. We've traveled across the world, and we've picked up an agenda on the way. We've picked up the man with a plan who can. If you're in the podcasting world and you want to make yourself, you want to be known, you want to be the authority, the expert, you want to be the go-to person. We've picked up that guy. How does that feel, Jose? That we have that guy on our podcast. Well, I mean, if you ask me how I feel, it feels good. It feels close. It feels amazing. I'm inspired. Looking forward to today's session. And I'm not going to say anything else because I may be giving away some information that's coming next. So I've got to be careful with this. <laughs> a session? What's going to happen in a session? Well, it's just it's for me like the session. So let's see what happens during the session. But I'll tell you what. Why didn't you introduce Alex? Because, you know, I know you two go way back before me, before I was on the scene. I'm the third wheel here today. You intro, Alex, and then we'll take away. Here it comes. First of all, <laughs> I'm not going to give a name yet. I'm only oh. going to say oh. La Leyenda from Ooh. the podcasting world and industry. Not only a guy that is incredible at what he does when it comes to podcasting and speaking, running a business and helping others succeed with their podcasts. This is a very, very, well, very, 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 and I'm going to go very, very, he's an amazing human being. He's the guy, Elliot, I don't know if you know this, I'm on Clubhouse because of him. And then, of course, uh -huh. he came along as well. So he gave me so many opportunities at the beginning that, you know, I'm delighted, super grateful and excited to have him today on our show. Welcome to the one and only La Leyenda, Alex Chisno. Elliot is supposed to give us the music. Oh, the, the applause. Yeah. Elliot, yeah. Just, give us, just yeah. give us the battery as well. Ta -ra -ta 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 -ta. What do you want? The battery? Well, I call that the battery, the drum. Sorry, battery in Spanish. Need no, you don't need no battery. <laughs> but here's the battery. <laughs> that's the battery, apparently. Ah, uh, that's a battery. In Venezuela, that's what they use to play the drums. Well, so. Spanish okay. Spanish speaking people will understand that's the battery, la batería, and this is, of course, the drums. So over to you, Alex Chisnell. Fantastic. Okay, here we are. Alex Chisnell. Oh. Please introduce Choo! yourself. The battery. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> so tell us no. a little bit, how, how did you end up doing what you're doing today? Because, you know, you are the go-to authority when it comes to podcasting. So tell us a little bit about that. Wow. Um, I kind of feel like I've come full circle, really, in that I started out many decades ago going straight from university into radio, BBC Radio. That was like my first, first job. Um, and my first ever interview was with Lennox Lewis, who was heavyweight boxing champion oh, of the yeah. world. So it's kind of like a crazy story, really. But um, I then got the travel bug. I left to join Virgin Atlantic, which is Branson's airline, um, and liked it and stayed. And then fast forward many years later, and um, I ended up working for another of Richard Branson's companies, Virgin Startup, uh, which helped op entrepreneurs launch businesses, help fund and mentor them. And... Um, I was putting a podcast together for them. Um, we decided we wanted to go into podcasting. So I started doing that. And it was a podcast called How I Built This oh, by, yeah. by NPR with a guy called you were Guy, with, guy Raz. You were with guy Ross. No, that, that was the inspiration. That was oh, the inspiration for the, for the Virgin Startup podcast. Yeah. Got it, got it. Um, and then, yeah, fast forward now, I, I host my own show. It's been going over four years called Screw It, Just Do It. Nearly 400 episodes uh, oh. right now. I've co-hosted two others as well. And, um, yeah, literally went all in on podcasting about two and a half, three years ago, I guess, when people just kept asking me to help them with their podcast. So I started hosting like a few workshops in my local town here in Bournemouth in Dorset. And then mm -hmm. in the end, I was like, do you know what? instead of just giving people advice, I'm actually going to do it for them. So 
let's let's launch a course let's launch um some coaching and then ultimately decided to launch uh, an agency and you know hire a producer and marketing and all of that really so now come forward to when us guys all connected on clubhouse which is you know an audio platform um all feels part of the journey really you know this all this audio space is just just blown up in 2021 it's been it's been unbelievable so yeah i feel like uh, it's a kind of perfect wave at the moment to be honest with you brilliant okay so did you have to kind of you know to use the term you screw it let's do it did you have to get permission from virgin i mean because that's one of richard branson's books isn't it or is there no issue with that at all his book is called screw it let's do it ah see what i did there see what i, I did see. there very, very clever <laughs> so it was it was um it's a bit of a story there but it was a bit of a nod to my old boss and also at the time it was such an absolute ball ache on getting the podcast published for virgin startup like it went through it was a, a very long story short it literally went through virgin startup it took them three months to say yes then it went through virgin media virgin.com virgin pr and in the end i was like do you know what screw it just do it i'm just going to launch my own podcast i cannot be bothered waiting <laughs> any longer for virgin to keep going up all the channels you know and it was it was just painful it was one of those lessons of working for a big corporate and people think from the outside looking in virgins you know really innovative dynamic company and it is those things but equally it's the same as like a british airways or an ibm to make a decision takes forever you did you know. just confer virgin to the british airways oh my <laughs> gosh richard we going crazy and his what did he do no he didn't just do that but yes wow so tell us um tell us this you know podcasting it's it's got a little bit of the hollywood kind of feel to it i'll just podcast and then everything be happen and then loads of people will then i'll get loads of listeners and then i'll you know, I'll be like Guy Ross and how I build this. And millions of people will Elliot, listen to me. I, I need, yeah, I need to say this. And exactly. Every, for some reason, Alex, every time <laughs> Elliot wants to become a pay speaker or he's speaking about podcasting now and making you famous and all of that. So he goes and starts speaking a bit like this. So if you want to be a pay <laughs> speaker or if you want to be doing podcasting and you become a huge celebrity. So... Okay, he I was dancing a little bit. That. Yeah, he was kind of... There was a, there was he something was jiving there. and moving and doing it. Anyway, yeah, Elliot, well, yeah, you well, can carry you on with the question. my buddy. flow there. You, you took away my moment. Come to you, took away my moment. Yeah, there. welcome, Who's welcome, saying? welcome to my world, Alex Chisnell. I mean, this happens every day, <laughs> so it's kind of payback time. Oh. <laughs> oh, I see. I see what's happening. So what I was going to ask, basically, is what are some of the, A, delusions people have around podcasting, and B, what are some of the problems people have around podcasting? Because a lot of people think that, podcasting is just going to solve all their problems. It's going to bring all the wealth and it's going to get them all famous. So tell us, smash that right here, right now. Tell us why that is not true. Or maybe why it is true. Maybe I'm the idiot. I don't know. Over to you. Alex. No, look, yeah. I mean, most people think it is, like you alluded to, going to be super, super easy. But, you know, it's not. There are a lot of moving parts when it comes to making a podcast. Um, like with any anything new that you you create, you know, be that on any social media platform, if that's on LinkedIn or Instagram, you know, whatever you create, if no one can find you, then it is what it is, isn't it? You know, it it could be the most amazing piece of artwork, but if no one can actually find it and listen to it, then you're lost. So that, that I always say to people, the hard work begins when your podcast is live, because then you need to tell people about it. Then you need to get people to find it, to listen to it, and then share it and, you know, spread the word. So it, it is, like you say, it, it's a bit of a misnomer, really, that, you know, people have this association, especially, I think, in the last 18 months to two years, more so than ever, that, you know, I'll start a podcast and as if by magic, um, you know, people people will find it and it will catapult me, my business um, to, to another level. But, you know, it's not like that. Yes. You know, we've worked with people who've had amazing successes with their with their podcast, but they have worked their asses off for actually, you know, marketing. And at the end of the day, for a lot of people, it is just that it's a marketing channel and you can choose, you know, video, you know, we're live here on YouTube um they can choose a blog you know the written word they can they can write different social media posts but 
or they can choose audio and they can go on clubhouse or green room or they can go let's have a bit of a longer form of content and and choose a podcast so it, it comes with its its challenges and you know i wouldn't i wouldn't be fair if i didn't say it was it wasn't hard work for people but you know for me it's it has been life-changing you'll, you'll hear other people that we know the pete cones of this world saying the same thing it's been life-changing and by that it's just been the opportunities that it's given me from the connections that I've made from the guests that I've had on there. I've ended up, you know, well, I'm sure we'll talk about this, but kind of come full circle for being asked to speak and being flown to, to Italy, to Sweden, to speak at events, to putting on and speaking at events at the NEC in front of four or 5,000 yeah. people, you know, things that I never thought would happen. I never wanted to speak on a stage in my life. That was never an ambition, but I actually found out I really liked it. <laughs> But yeah. it, was, it was never something that I thought I want to do that. It's just the opportunities that come off the back of, I guess, you know, having something out there. And it could have been a YouTube channel, of course, but it happened to be a podcast. People found it. People liked it. And a, a lot of it was people seeing the network that I had and wanting yeah. to either access that network or, or like the people in that network and wanted to find out more. So, mm. cool. And, and as, a, as a recording this, Obviously, you know, both Jose and I are on Clubhouse every day at midday, 12 o'clock UK. And then you have your own show, the Alex and Sabrina show. What time's that on for people who might be listening to this? Well, because by the time people listen to this, Clubhouse might have gone. We don't know. But, you know, while it's still happening, it's every day at what? And people can find it. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. on Clubhouse. The yeah. Alex and, and Sabrina show. Six days a week, even Saturdays. It wow. used to even be Sundays, and that was too much of a commitment. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, six days a week uh, with Sabrina Stocker, who I met at that NEC event that I alluded to earlier from public speaking. Um, and, yeah, we, we, we decided to start this, this or she decided to start this show on Clubhouse, dragged me on there kicking and screaming, and now <laughs> it's, it's six days a week. Yeah, and, it's um, again, it has led to lots of really super interesting opportunities, to be honest with you. So, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I and I guess this is a great example. How I met I mean, you because is... I met Jose. Jose right. called me in. And then since then, then, we, we, then we did the show for you. And then here we are. Jose, and over to you. Going back to podcasting, Elliot K. No, it's okay. Be quiet within, you know, within reason. It's okay. I want your energy. <laughs> Otherwise, the Elliot and Jose show wouldn't be the same. Our, the, the Elliot and Jose show. What, what are we calling this podcast again? I know you said it. The <laughs> Public Speaking Experts podcast. Or don't mix it right. up with Clubhouse. Uh, we yeah. met, I met Elliot uh, on a podcast because I invited him as a guest. And then we met Alex ah. on, on Clubhouse. Yeah. So, I so you guys met... didn't meet on Clubhouse, you met on a podcast. Yeah, we met yeah. On, a cl- on a podcast last year. And then we ah. finally met a couple of weeks ago. But that's another yes. story for another I day. I saw <laughs> some of that, yeah. When I showed up at the wrong house to surprise him. <laughs> oh, I saw that live on Instagram. Yeah. I was like, oh no, I can't believe it. Trust, trust uh, that, that, that to was be the good case. Fun, that, that so, yeah, Jose, it looked amazing. like you had a question. Anyway, What's your question? Yes, of course. I do have a few. But this thing, Alex, you just shown us, uh, spoken about the tip of the iceberg, the beautiful things that you've had. Oh, there is there is there echo? No, Elliot no. is getting it. I can hear it. Let's keep working. Oh, I can Okay. Hold on a second, hold on a second. All good, my end. I'll keep talking in case you can. I'm looking at my levels, man. No, you're all good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's a little bit of an echo. So for those listening, we've got a bit of an echo. We'll persevere for a bit and see what happens. Otherwise, we might just have to not persevere. Jose, it's funny. It always happens, technical issues, by the way, Alex. Always happen when Jose starts speaking. Does it? Okay, interesting. It's usually only when you've got another device open. It's the only time I did like 400 live webinars last year, so I'm an expert in this field. So define, <laughs> define another device would now. that be a phone or something like that? It's gone, yeah. Yeah, like a Maybe phone or, or another tab in your screen. Yeah, okay. but we can edit but that out. Let, I think I think just... the FBI. No, it's this is raw, Alex. We go raw. Raw. Yeah. yeah. No, no exactly. this editing, we some editing. Raw. We knock it out the park. Jose, without <laughs> an echo. Over to you. Ready? Ready? Here we go. Ready? 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 Oh, I hit Jesus. the mic and everything. Jesus Christ, I hit the mic and everything. Okay, uh, I need to buy a new <laughs> microphone now. <laughs> it's just the excitement. Alex, you, as I was saying before, you've mentioned, because of the podcasting, some of the great opportunities you've had and the people you've met. 
And that's all beautiful. You're giving us the tip of the iceberg. I want you to show with us some, some of the sweat and tears, the struggle, I mean, the things you've had to do on a daily basis to become a successful podcaster. Yeah, okay, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, I guess for me, the, the biggest one was, you know, working myself up to doing this podcast, lining up the interviews, <laughs> recording the interviews in like the January of 2017, and then getting scared and literally doing nothing for five months. <laughs> that was that was hard um, because then you're just prevaricating, you know, all of these all of these things beginning with the word P. And um, when I finally then released those episodes, I got two downloads in week one. So that kind of reinforced the whole thing of why I decided to sit on them for five months you know yeah you were right nobody wanted to listen to this nobody likes your voice nobody gives a shit about what you got to say about anything oh dear oh my gosh wow. but then do you know what you know at, at that point in time i was already following people who were always doing what i wanted to do like the likes of a lewis house john lee dumas from entrepreneur on fire um Chris Ducker from youpreneur.com, people like that. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you read their story, you, you hear about their struggles and, and you realize you're not the only one and you decide to be consistent, i.e. put something out every single week and tell people about it. And, and I've known, I've noticed that when it, when it, you know, and it, and it ebbs and flows and it goes up and down, but when it kind of drops down is when life takes over and I'm busy doing something else and I'm not being consistent. I'm not putting something out every single day that mentions my podcast, you know, because if you take, you know, what Seth Godin says, which is on any given day, you just accept the fact that not more than 1% of your audience is going to see and hear your stuff. As soon as you get over that, that's fine. Right. You know, don't get hung up on feeling that you're being really, um, I don't know, annoying or cheesy or whatever by talking about your podcast every day. Make it different. Don't put the same bloody thing out every day. But ultimately, you know, if you did that seven days a week, it's still nowhere near your 100% of your audience is going to see and hear what you do anyway. You'd be right. lucky if, you know, 20% of your audience still hears about it just through organic, you know, just the way that the algorithms have got you by the... <laughs> <laughs> And that was Alex giving of sound effects for those of you listening, not oh, missing yeah. any sound effects. <laughs> oh, <laughs> get off! Stop <laughs> twisting my melons, man! <laughs> Love it. I think, that you, you know, you raise such an important point here, is, which is consistency. And I think, you know, what happens is, in generally, I think when we, you know, obviously we, we work with speakers, and this is a public speaking expert podcast, Jose, you know, it is all about consistency and it's about doing it when times are rough, just as much when times are good. And when you think you have two listeners or when you have a thousand listeners, it is about that key consistency. And like you said, you know, if you can just accept that 1% of your audience at any time will listen and do anything, then it's okay. You know, every night I aim to give my, my wife 1% extra, but she doesn't always let me. But what can I say? That's another, that's another show and that's another podcast. Definitely Jose. another podcast. <laughs> Definitely another podcast. <laughs> What was your next question, my man? <laughs> um, I well, that one percent is key, and that's why I always ask successful people. Now it has a whole different meaning. Oh, uh, is it? The one, no. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. It's me. It's all about. I'm sorry we're about talking. That. We're talking percent, not anything yes, else. Not inches. Okay. No, oh, okay. now he's done it. Now he's done it. <laughs> oh goodness me! Well, I mean, I'm not going to speak about the show we had today. Anyway. Oh my God! Ne yes, next. No. No, no, no way. No way, Jose. It's very important. And I want to highlight for the audience listening to this that, you know, that consistency element and that 1% that you mentioned, I think it is key, Alex, as, uh, you know, we want to become successful. Sometimes we give up because we think we're not having an impact. So it's good to be, to be clear and, well, pick on these things that you're saying, the strategy for successful people. That's worked for you and that's been your case. Even now, nowadays, when you post and when you share, is that still the case or has that changed by any, in any way? 
Yeah, for for me, it's I've gotten better at it because I've decided to get help with it because I realise that I'm not the best person to be doing that. So I have somebody, you know, who helps me, um, you know, brainstorm what content my audience want to see. Um, we make sure we put something out every day. And then we're just having a team meeting today, we're saying, right, I want to look at the last three months, what's been working, what hasn't been working. And for the last quarter of the year, it's like, well, let's double down on, because it changes, doesn't it? You know, you know, people used to, you know, audiograms used to be really good. And now it's like video, you get more of a reaction, people watching videos. So it's like, okay, let's change it up. So yeah, we were just talking about that in the, in the team meeting today. And you know, another thing that you just mentioned there with the consistency, I was literally having this conversation with Pete Cohen at the weekend going, you know, look at who's come and gone on Clubhouse. Look who's right. coming up. People, people have yeah. audiences in a hundred. I didn't know Rob Moore had gone. You know, no. the audience of hundreds of thousands of people. And then for whatever reason, maybe it's not working for them. Maybe it's not, you know, uh, it, you know, we're having that discussion at the moment. I know you're, you've had that discussion. You guys, is it a return on your investment time? You know, is it a return? But, you know, who knows? Will we look back in five years? You know, if we if we jumped out of these slots that we're in now, just like with the podcast, there are moments where I thought about giving up. I spoke to Chris on my show four times, I think, and he's a, he's had a podcast for over ten years, and he said every year he's had that. I just knocked the podcast on the head, and now I think he announced this month, literally this month, he's seven million downloads of his podcast, like huge numbers. Think, imagine if he had listened to that voice. Yeah. Knock it on the head, you know. Um, you know, this is the next big thing. Okay, let's go all in on this. Let's ditch everything else. So, I think you've still got to. You, I think as long as you're measuring things and seeing if it if it's obviously worthwhile for you, um, and yeah, consistency is absolutely key. And the other one for me, and and I think maybe we'll touch on this for people is, you know, when it comes to getting guests, persistency yeah. is key. Being persistent, not taking no for an answer, or actually respecting the fact when they say when they tell you no because you've got to kind of do that these days or otherwise you get thrown in jail but yeah you know until they <laughs> well, say no being persistency <laughs> and stalking isn't that that's the one that's the one <laughs> indeed. yeah I, I, yeah i think it's really fascinating because there is the whole addiction to overnight success right and i think because social media is inundated with I was sitting on my couch and now I have 7 million followers because I, I, I farted on Instagram or, you know, I did this video <laughs> or, you know, I think there is this obsession where it has to happen quickly and people forget that actually things have a natural pace, even Clubhouse, right? When a lot of people came on board, yes, they exploded with follows and they exploded with everything. And like you say, a lot of them are gone now. And, you know, we're still here where we'll be in a few years. It's, it's a great question, but it is about that persistency, that consistency, but it, how much for you, Alex, does it tie into your bigger why? You know, mm. because, you know, because you're on Clubhouse six days a week. You're a father of two. Is that right? Yeah, two right? girls. Yeah. You know, you do your podcasting, you do your coaching, you know, you do your trainings and you do everything else. How much of that ties into a bigger calling for you, a bigger why? Really good question. And one I'm spending a bit of time on this week, actually, um, with Sabrina, with Pete Cohen, um, to try and shape all of our, and for those who don't know, you know, Sabrina's my co-host, Pete takes the Saturday show, he's there most days, um, you know, we've, we were all there from day one together, so it's, um, Pete was in the very first room we did, funnily enough, and, and it's trying to work out, you know, these are all our individual whys, yeah. is there a bigger reason why all of us should still be doing what we're doing, are we serving those people are we getting that return on investment and look for me you know my my why has changed over the years it was different when i was working with virgin startup and it and it's different now and for me i think the reason i i did that very first couple of workshops physical workshops that i did and then turned it into an agency is that i saw the power of having your own voice of being able to tell your story and, and share that and literally seeing, and I always, you know, hold this up as an example of, I used to put on monthly networking events, you know, there'd be one in Bournemouth where I live, be yeah. London, Brighton, Manchester, and it would be an absolute ball ache to market each one for four weeks yeah. to get 50 people. Yeah. To, to literally turn up on a, you know, a cold, 
dark, wet Wednesday in the middle of January. And I remember, you know, going there and, you know, 50 people or what, whatever were there. And of course, it's always a great evening. You, you, you just connect with people. You know, we, we, we clearly missed that more than we've ever done, given what's happened during the, the pandemic. But for me, it was going home one of those nights and thinking, Jesus Christ, that was so such hard work. My feet are killing me. I'm absolutely mm-hmm. exhausted. Logging on to my podcast and over a thousand people in over a hundred countries around the world. And that was, you know, I'd, I'd come close to that number before, but never. And it was just one of those numbers that just that kind of benchmark and going, yeah. wow, just, just, I've literally just recorded something, uploaded it. And in 0.1 seconds, it's gone out to the world. And all of these people everywhere have listened to it. Yet here I am working my butt off to get 50 people in my hometown to a goddamn event with yeah. great speakers, you know, and it was just one of those moments going, wow, you know, if I can do it, anybody can bloody do it, really, you know, absolutely anybody. So I just thought then, you know, how can I help more people do what I do? So that, that's, that's my why. Um, and it's now, I think, kind of coming back to that, that chat we just had around Clubhouse was how does that fit in with, with Clubhouse and that commitment to time, like you say, every day doing it because I've... Yeah, come come to a few conclusions around it for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, fascinating stuff. I have a question, but Jose, I'll hand it back to you. I can see your your pencil. No, I'm thinking. actually I'm actually this is a good question, but probably towards the end as well. So it can be a good wrap up question. So if you've got another one, Elliot, at this point, what is that, Alex? Vodka. Alex Vodka. is about Alex is about to drink something. Okay. <laughs> Nubria. It was from from a podcast guest, funnily enough. Former rugby player, started a business. It's called um Think Drink. Ah. Good for the brain. Yeah. Very cool. New, new new tropics. Yeah. So I, I get all this free stuff from my guests. I love it. <laughs> it's well, brilliant. That, that, that. And and you're now sponsored <laughs> by a, a particular brand as well as a result of your podcast. Yeah. And that was being on Clubhouse, funnily enough. A whole bunch of different brands approached us. Yeah. Because That's of amazing. Clubhouse. Yeah, so I thought it was through my podcast, but it was them hearing me on Clubhouse, then going through and looking at my podcast and going, can we sponsor your podcast? And now I'm thinking, I now need to reach out to people going, would you like to sponsor the podcast? Would you like to sponsor the Clubhouse Room as well? Mm, I like to see commercialization. It's really interesting. Mm. I was talking to a guy who was one of my clients and he's just sold a whole bunch of petrol stations. And what was fascinating talking to him is how absolute commercial they were about every aspect, which is why their petrol stations grew during a pandemic and why Rishi Sunak actually invited him to a meeting to understand what he was, what they were doing. They've just sold like a whole bunch of them. And this is what I'm saying. Like he would think like we measured how many people at the pumps. We mentioned how many people would walk in, measure how many people went from the pumps and bought something when how many people just Mm. buy something, but not do petrol. They measured everything. They worked out that just by increase, they can increase their turnover daily by half a percent, just by getting every 16th customer to buy, to spend one more pound. Wow. I mean, it's just that. I love that. that, Yeah. By that level. I love numbers. Yeah. 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 And what you're saying is like, how do you treat every output as a potential revenue stream? But not, not that you're doing it for that reason, but how can you maximize? Because then it does incentivize you a lot a lot more as well and it's the same with when when we work with speakers and things like that it's like how can just understand that you're always selling please stop pretending that you're not selling even if you're of service even if you're giving back you're selling something yourself your your brand your your services your mission your whatever your message Mm. and you know and i think that's the other aspect is can we just stop pretending that we're not selling because we're always selling And, and i think that's important to comprehend so before we go to your question, Jose, or a question. What are some of the big no-nos when it comes to podcasting? What are you like? You're like, oh my God, I can't believe they did. Of course, not through your training, but you've seen you're like, oh my God, no, they just didn't do that. Have you any of those in, in the forefront of your mind? I, I would say the, the biggest one that you see 99% of people doing that they, they don't need to do is literally most people launch with one episode. Okay. They just, they launch with one episode and it disappears without a trace because they get bored. They said, so they launched one episode and, and most people would think, yeah, I record an episode and I'll get it live. That's the way it works. And you think, okay. So, you know, you, you send that to your 
your existing family, friends, social media followers, etc. And one episode, I don't know, let me give you an example. Say you've got thousands, say you've got 10,000 family, friends, followers, and you, and, you, and you record one episode, you send them to go and listen to that episode. And, um, you know, say 10% of them download it and you end up with like a, a thousand downloads. After, and, and I've no idea why this is the number, but apparently 99% of people give up before they record number seven. Wow. And you think that's like a month and a half. That's not even two months that people get bored. And I used to write blogs and it was virtually the same. It was like 99% of people would stop before they, they wrote their uh, 12th blog, like three months. And you would see, you go and look at your competitors and you, I'd be going looking at their blogs. I used to be in the health and fitness space, I used to have sports injury clinics. And I did that with a purpose that if we wrote a blog every week with the right keywords, we would get found for all of the keywords like, you know, sports injury, back pain, da 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 da, all these things. And it worked. But when you, I used to track all my competitors and they would all give up. They'd all start writing these blogs and they'd all give up. So it's the same with podcasting. Is instead, if you launched with, for example, uh, five episodes, OK, and you sent your 10,000 people to go and listen to that one episode, you get 5,000 downloads instead of you would 5x the results of that. You get this Netflix effect that yeah. if people like the, the one episode, they'll go and listen to the next one and then the next one. Because guess what happens? If they listen to one and they're done, you get this little pop-up from Apple going, if you like that, you'll like this. What does mm -hmm. it do? It sends you to your competitors. It sends right. them off to listen to their competitors' podcast. So what are the chances of getting them back? They've got to wait another seven days to get a notification to even launch another episode. So, yeah, one of the things that you know we teach all the time is to literally get ahead of the game uh, batch record a bunch of stuff. And it buys you a month anyway. It buys you a month of time, a month of clarity in your mind to get organized then. Yeah. And you can market the, the hell out of those four or five episodes. It doesn't have to be five. It could be three. It could be four. It could be we did one month before last, 17, which was the most anyone had ever launched. And guess what? They got to number one. And what <laughs> happens when you get to number one? You get a load of new eyeballs looking at what you do. And, you know, a percentage of those will translate into ears listening to your show. So it just means to me from day one, you can start to attract a brand new audience. Otherwise, you're just sending your existing following there. It doesn't get any visibility. So you don't gain any new followers and they go elsewhere. Yeah. So that, that's like, probably the biggest one for me. Yeah. Wow. Sounds like good. Nona, which is as we're recording this, I'm reassured to know that we've, we've had recording <laughs> and then hey. we're releasing. Um, it's quite interesting because obviously I've, I've got podcast voice for good. I'm on season three right now, just releasing it. And as you're speaking, I'm like, woo. And I've done almost a hundred episodes. What I didn't do Greg, is I, you know, is I didn't release a few at the time, but now there's enough of them for them. Neither did I. Yeah. <laughs> we live and learn, right? Um, but now they are weekly and, and you know they are growing and what's really nice is what's starting to come through is people messaging me and go, oh I listen to this one and I've listened that's to the that best one. that's and it's the like best. cool is like you yeah. say it, it's not hitting millions but it's consistently hitting across the world a few hundred sometimes sometimes over a thousand it depends exactly and you know people have to be looking for it as well mm. so it's really good stuff and of course you know for anybody out there who does kind of want to connect with any of us um of course, you can do that through the Elliot and Jose show on Instagram. And of course, that's where you get access to resources as well. And you get access to, the, you know, our, our notes from Clubhouse. So should you want to record, uh, download any tips as well. And of course, you get access to this podcast. But if you're listening to the podcast, why wouldn't you access to the podcast? But there you go. Uh, and we'll find out how you can connect with Alex and everyone shortly. Jose, I can see it's been brewing. Let it out, boy. Let it out. It's been brewing for a while. And I just, one thing I need, guys, I need a bit of music, a round of applause for Alex, something. I need the battery again. Yeah, just give me the drums. Give me something. Come on. How about this? <laughs> Is that okay? That's not what you're expecting, though. What about this? <laughs> <laughs> There we 
big eye was that good enough? No, that's, that's what I'm talking about. I that was it's not what I expected. But anyway, I was just waiting. <laughs> so you just gave me gave me a bit of everything, which is fantastic. Alex, well, I think Elliot kind of did it now. Whenever you're recording your podcast, what would you say is uh, how would you recommend to promote ourselves within the podcast? And when I say ourselves, yourself, what would be and maybe Elliot, this is going towards tips so are we at that yeah, point yet let's or... do it let's let's okay. take it to the tips so it, it's one of those things because we're always selling and that's fantastic i'm also always um inviting people to promote and sell in a way that is congruent as well that serves that adds value mm -hmm. so what would you say at this point whenever we are on a podcast for the audience as well they're working on the podcast and they want to share what it is that they're doing how would you go about it Yeah, really good question and something that I've learned over the last couple of years. I certainly wasn't doing it for, for the first few. And then we we actually had a client do this, um, American client who's got offices in, in Australia and the UK called NPE Fitness. And they are coaching for fitness professionals. So typically they would turn your average personal trainer into a business owner and get them to think, I can have my own facility, I can have my own employees. You know, I can scale this. Da, 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 da. So what they used to do for every single episode was provide a resource for that episode that they would mention and send people back to their website where the audience could download. And it was specific. It wasn't like for the next 12 months, we're going to say, go to my website and pick up our free blah, blah, blah. It was like in this episode, we've been talking about um hiring your first staff member if you would like our top 10 tips on how to hire your first staff member go to www.boom and they would capture their email address you know get them into their funnel and then make them aware of all the different services that they could provide and it was just the fact that and i know the guy now funnily enough got a call with them in a couple of weeks because they want me to make um their next podcast series for them we did the original one two years ago Um, and then they've had a reorganization and they, they want us to launch two podcasts for them because they've got two client demographics. So that's, ex you know, exciting discussion that I'm looking forward to. But it was seeing how professionally they treated it. Like the podcasting was another marketing channel that they wanted to explore the audio space. But it was the fact that each one was specific to every week it would change. So it would be, you know, switching those different buttons on the different types of, um, you know, audience that they would attract. You know, and I just thought that is a really professional way to treat it rather than most people go, if you really like my podcast, go rate and review. Da, 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 da. It's like, how many people take that action? You know, not many. We all, we all do it. The listen is would probably you... 1% of that 1% of that 1%. Yeah. But it, regardless, would you still, and I really like that because it's kind of very specific to the episode and then you go invite people to download and benefit from that resource. Fantastic. Would you still recommend that people say, rate the podcast, share it and everything else? I, I mean, I do just because, you know, look, if, if the majority of people listening to a podcast are listening on, you know, one of these things, okay, on the same platform. So to get them to rate and review is not a huge action to do in that if, if they're on Apple, for example, just, you know, scroll down, click where it says rate the podcast, And rate it. We really like five stars. And then right mm. next to that, it says write a review. And for me, it's like that's the if you want to communicate with me, if you want to send me a message, easiest way, I'm going to see it straight away is click write a review. Let me know what you think. Rather than go to your email, go over to Instagram and do it. You're taking them away from that platform. Yeah. So I think it's an opportunity. For me, the easiest way to get someone to rate and review, a couple of things would be when people do write in, when people do send DM you. That's a great opportunity then because you've already got a fan is to go back to them and go, you know, massively appreciate that. You know, what would be absolutely awesome would be if you could write a review. It just means that the way the algorithm, you don't even have to mention the world algorithm. It just means more people will get to hear about this show. See, I never you know? that. I like that. Yeah. Again, I learned it from somebody. I think it was like, like Chris Ducker or John Lee Doomer, somebody like that. And I started doing it. And then you've got, you know, a bit of engagement with your audience as well, which is, which is gold dust, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, people see Stephen Bartlett do it, see Rob Moore do it. And every quarter, maybe run a competition to get ratings and reviews and, and give something away, give something that 
people, you know, something personal, you know, what, you know, something of your time that they can access. Is that a coaching call? Is that, you know, uh, tickets to an event where you're speaking, whatever that might be, but, you know, run a competition and you're going to pick two or three winners who leave a review. But to do that, they've got to leave a review, screenshot it, and then tag you in it in a social media post or get them to send it in and you capture their email as well. There's like two different ways you can kind of do it, but it works. It works. One of my clients, she's got a podcast and what she does is whoever reviews it and sends her a picture, she sends them a copy of her book. Perfect. Yeah. So take note, Jose. No, definitely. I'm thinking if I don't if I don't have a book yet, should I send a picture of myself? Or well, that's probably not very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no. not sure. I think you know, test everything, right? Alex? Test, test everything. Absolutely. Right. I think a picture of yourself smiling like that would be thousands of people would take you up on that, Jose. Why not? So what would you say are kind of like again, some tips uh, as we can, you know, we're gonna wrap up shortly. Um for speakers to get how can they use podcasting at speaking gigs you know because it worked for you so what would you say for our listeners that they can get more speaking gigs as a result of podcasting mainly doing it themselves but maybe as guests so tell, tell us more yeah i think both of those interweave in that you know once you have your own podcast it's far easier to approach other podcasts to become a guest um you know Quite often, it's uh, if you come on my podcast, I'm let's reciprocate. Podcast. Oh, exactly. So I, I think for me, it's, it's a great calling card. I think I've given this advice recently to a couple of people who want to do the same thing. And it's like, you know, make sure you you get some kind of, um, you know, biography in the form of like a PDF with, and I know you guys say this, you know, with some media pictures, some half decent photos of yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, a great way to do it is literally, you know, if you are a podcast, you know, launch your podcast take my advice, 5X, 10X of downloads, get it in the chart, screenshot that, screenshot the top 20 where you are, and then contact the other 19 podcasts in there and go, hey, look, look how, look how successful we are. Us, <laughs> you, me. We should be on each other's podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I just think it gives you, it gives you a, a body of work, a library of work that you can then, reach out to event organizers um and look i i put on events we are currently would love to have you guys there putting on an event again that's going to be next spring that's going to be at olympia in london yeah. um that's going to be for content creators um and we're going to be doing a bunch of those shows like nec olympia places like that um and i'm always looking for you know, for great speakers. And quite often, you know, if they've got a podcast, there's an easy way or a YouTube channel, which you can repurpose the content, as we know, put that out as your podcast. But it's just a great calling card and, and a way for me to verify that this person is actually <laughs> going to be half decent. They're going to bring value to my audience. What are they going to walk away? So that, that, that's one of the things I tell people to put in that biography. Most podcast hosts want to know what is their audience going to learn from having this person on my show? You know, what are three things that they can learn by listening to this episode, you know? Um, and I think if you put those on your biography, then straight away you're going to go, boom, that's exactly the person I want on my show. My audience is going to learn from something. It's going to stand me in a good light and my podcast in a good light at the same time. It's not just selling, 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 fluff, fluff, fluff. You know. Well, you said fluff, fluff, fluff. I'm not sure we can bring Jose to Olympia next year. Hey. I do fluff, fluff, fluff and fluff. Hey, Elliot, okay, whenever, whenever I meet you, exactly, I do the fluff. <laughs> he brings exactly, the fluff. Exactly. I bring the fluff. So three things you're going to be learning, fluff. It's just probably the one. Okay, stop it. Stop it. it because this could be seen as bullying or heard as bullying as well. Be careful. Yeah. Just because I've got an accent and all of that. So, yeah. I can't believe you just pulled that card. Oh, no. did I? Oh, that is that. Okay. So, yeah, I did. No. I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to change the subject very quickly. I mean, this is what okay, I'm going to say. Different. Alex, fantastic tips, buddy. I mean, <laughs> I, I, had, I had some questions already well and done. you've answered them. I had questions around the visibility element and you've already kind of answered that. And I think it was super cool. I'm going to go back to the fact that you said it's important to record a few episodes and then, you know, uh, publish them all together so people have got actually... Some, some to go to. I think that's key. Um, 
I mean, the, the thing is, my, my question, I would like to know, Alex, as a, you know, as you, Alex Chisno, and the podcasting world, and thank you very much, by the way, I take you up on that, on the on the speaking opportunities, because we love it, Elliot and I both do. We can probably do mm. something together as well, or yeah. separate, but, you know, the Elliot and Jose show comes to right your yet. show. Yeah, boom, <laughs> in your it. face. And then I go well, with I the think fluff. we need to give Alex credit. I think it's inspired <laughs> by the Alex and Sabrina show kind of inspired, inspired the uh, Elliot and Jose show. It did, uh, yeah. Kudos. It did. You know? it credit did. where credit's no, too. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. <laughs> We're not good enough. <laughs> okay, I haven't even asked my, my question. There. Hey, Alex. <laughs> like, I'm not sure Jose knows where that's from. Do you know where that's from, Jose? No. Do you I know where you that's want... from, Alex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's from Wayne's World. Correct. Wayne's oh World. yeah, Wayne's World, Wayne's World, World, party time, excellent. Yeah, excellent. That's where it's from. So carry okay, on. cool. Right. Moving forward, Alex. I always like mm -hmm. to say, to ask this question. Three to five years, where are you within all of this podcasting and everything that you are doing? Cool. Good question. Um I think for me, I would I would just I would like to have but I mean, look, the reason I started my podcast was to give me access to have conversations with people that inspired me. And I would honestly just like to con continue that. You know, I've like this dream 100 list that I would like, you know, you have your Tony Robbins on there and you have, uh, you know, whomever else is on there. And I would just like to keep on, you know, learning from these amazing people that I've managed to get on on my show um i'd like to have helped more and more people i don't know if there's a the number on that but do exactly the same and and essentially experience the opportunities that i've experienced you know and i and i've seen just from having a podcast then moving that onto you know this audio platform clubhouse that we've been talking about and thinking well you know where can we where can we take that because it's um it's super interesting having it in as a live element. So, yeah, for me, look, I, I don't have probably any anything other than that, really. To be honest with you, I don't know of any aspiration to say I want to be a Joe Rogan with a hundred million dollar Spotify contract. Although, if anybody wants to make any offers like that, then they will be considered. They will be considered. It'd be rude of me not to. If the terms are right. If the terms are right. <laughs> yeah. But look, well, it's, it's interesting. Shame, I was going to offer you one right here, right now. <laughs> <laughs> fax it. Do we do faxes these days? I don't know. We do faxes, no. do we? No, do I don't know. Maybe in some, I, in some countries. <laughs> I've never faxing. used the fax for God's sake. I don't know why I freaking said that. I'll send you the check. Right? The <laughs> there same. you go. Boom. Yeah. That, that is really yeah. beautiful. So, Alex, you've shared so much with us today and you shared so much with the listeners. How do people reach out to you? Where do they go? What can they do? Please plug away. Uh, sure. So, Easiest way like to connect with me personally would be Instagram. So it's Alex Chisnell underscore, but you can obviously easily find me. Clubhouse, it's at, at Podpreneur. Um, and then every other social media platform, it's Alex Chisnell. Um, and my website is podpreneur.co.uk. Brilliant. Podpreneur. Podpreneur.uk. .co.uk. .co.uk. Jose, hey, any final thoughts? Me Yes, I've got many, but just give me a bit of music. But quickly this time, don't give me the whole ballada Powered thing. Powered by or... Riverside yeah, but... FM. <laughs> I didn't oh. know that was going to happen. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. We'll take it. Jesus Christ alive. There you go. Whoa. I'm back. Alex. Oh, he's left us. <laughs> <laughs> there he's back. He's back. <laughs> <laughs> I just have like a big one word. No, this wouldn't be one word because thank you. It's actually two words, right? So I started it, it all is. wrong. It is. Uh -huh. So two words. Thank you so much, Alex Chisno. You have shared so much with us today and uh, so many takeaways. So I'm, I'm curious, I mean, for the audience, what are you going to be doing apart from connecting with Alex? What are you going to do in order to take your podcast to the next level? And there is also some homework for us to do as well, Elliot, wouldn't you say? 
Well, I had all this in my doing. mind already. So. All right, yeah. Yes. The thing is with Elliot, he knows it all. I'm, I'm, no, I'm vulnerable. That's what I'm, I'm saying. I'm, I said I'm I had vulnerable it in my mind. as a speaker. Yeah, yeah, you had it. You had it, you had it in your mind for the last five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really did. <laughs> Wait, <clears throat> you know okay, what? I had Elliot, it in you, my you, mind. You had it in your mind. It's because I listened to Alex on Clubhouse. There you go. That's right. how I had it in my mind. Mm, you know, so I listened to some of the rooms. They hear. Like, when I've been in the rooms, I've actually listened. Okay, so that puts me in a very bad position because I've been to your rooms and then that means I haven't listened. Anyway, I did this. That's what I said, but you said it. Wow, okay. so Here's a question back at you two to finish off. I'm going to turn the tables on you because I'm a podcast host and I'm used to asking questions. (laughs) What is your vision with your clubhouse and how that fits into Jose and Elliot coming together as one? How does that Mm, fit in? Have you got the vision? Are you working on it? Talk me through it. You know, the conversations we've had, Jose and I, has been very much to turn this into an entity within itself, Mm. right? So obviously you want to grow it in numbers to become, you know, more than. So hence the launch of the podcast to create an extension where people can't come to the room or they stop. You know, we have something beyond the live experience. Yeah. From there, we are talking about various different access points to the Elliot and Jose. But we really want to build it up as a brand in itself. So you know, let's say when we come and do Olympia next year, it's not the Elliot and Jose show necessarily, but it's Elliot and Jose teaching X or Elliot and Jose doing Got this. You. So it's definitely to become an entity. We probably need to refine a bit more, but we've always been in alignment when it comes to what we stand for and the impact we want to create. But we probably do need to come together a bit like you're doing and mm. going, what is our collective why? Yeah. Is that about right, yeah. Jose? That's a, that's a beautiful answer. And I didn't know you had these feelings and thoughts and... <laughs> yeah, everything has that vision about where we're going together because I love it. And to complement that is the fact to take this to the next level because we want greater visibility, Alex, because we already know the impact we're having on people, yeah, on our yeah. audiences. Just last week only, Alex, every day we had a person or two at least sharing what, you know, the changes they had experienced because of coming to the show. We had some video testimonials. So only uh, I'm all about the compound effect. Imagine if we're impacting at this point, this amount of people, if we get more visibility and we grow together and become clear about our vision, expand it, then we, it can be a very powerful movement. That's why we call this, whether it's the Elliot and Jose show moving forward, whatever we call it, it's the movement that is transforming people's lives because public speaking is transformational. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I love that. That's great. It's just really interesting because, you know, we hosted the Winners Club last week um, and they just released this app. And I was just super interested to find out what's their vision. Why did they decide to build an app? And I don't, hey, I don't know if that's, a, if that's the answer to move people from one app to another app. But, you know, they, they maybe they do. So um, we'll find out. It's a great big social media experiment, isn't it? So it's, it's good to be part of the journey, I think. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's been fascinating. Thank you again for giving up your precious time to Pleasure. Spend with us and share your tips, your knowledge, your advice, your wisdom. So thank you for that. Here you go. Bravo. Even get a round of applause. Bravo. Give it to Alex. Give it to Alex Chisno. Lovely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, he's done it. He's done he it. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. And in conclusion, by for any of you who want access, obviously. Please connect with Alex, whether it be personally on Instagram or through social. Go check out podpreneur.co.uk as well. It's packed with value. I mean, if you enjoyed this interview, imagine 400 episodes of it is the other thing I want to say. And here's what I want every listener to take away from today's episode, people watching it uh, who watch on YouTube as well. It is about consistency. There is no quick cure. There is no quick pay. It happens because... You're doing it again and again. Now, do you need to refine along the way? You do. Do you need to be strategic? Yes. Do you need to be tactical? Of course. But it is about doing it again and again. Because if you're doing it again and again, you are beating the 99% who are sitting on their bum bums doing nothing who are giving up too quickly. Now, remember, you know, Alex mentioned people give up before the seventh, right? It's by the sixth people have given up. So if you've made it to the eighth, you're already a success. So please remember that. Be consistent. Be persistent. Keep going. Keep growing. And always show up as your best you. I'm Elliot Kay. And I'm Jose Ukar. And we'll and... see you. And I'm this Alex is Alex. <laughs> Just in <laughs> case, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye. You've been listening to the Public Speaking Expert.
Sports oh, Podcast oh, oh. with Elliot K and Jose oh. Ucar. Follow us on Instagram and join us next week for even more. Remember to always speak your greatness. Subscribe, rate, and comment. Yeah.